Almost a decade before Neil Armstrong took humanity's first steps on the moon, the American Air Force had a wild plan for Earth's natural satellite. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union tried to position themselves as world leaders in scientific, military, and technological prowess. This geopolitical conflict dragged on for nearly five decades. In 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik and Sputnik 2, the first satellites in history, and Americans fell behind in the space race. To get ahead of the communists, the United States assembled a team of their best scientists, including recent grad school alumni Carl Sagan. The mission of this collective of geniuses, to figure out how to blow up the moon. Project A119 had no real functional purpose. The single goal was to show the world, especially the Soviets, that the United States could achieve something ambitiously spectacular through a giant mushroom cloud. Had the project come to fruition, Apollo 11 wouldn't ever have happened, and history as we know it would be drastically different. Although the concept of demolishing the moon seems unimaginable and downright crazy, all ideas were considered during the Cold War. In the late 1950s, feelings of paranoia and distrust ran rife. Scientific one-upmanship between the U.S. and its arch-nemesis, the USSR, was one of the battlefronts in the War for Global Supremacy. On October 4th, 1957, the public was surprised when news broke that the USSR had successfully launched the world's first ever satellite, Sputnik. Only a month later, Sputnik 2 was also launched into Earth's orbit. Dr. Vince Houghton, a curator of the International Spy Museum, described the moment as such, quote, The Americans and the West were terrified of the concept that, potentially, the Soviets had beaten us at our own game. We'd always been the big kids in science and technology, the people who invented new and innovative things. All of a sudden, the Soviets had beaten us into space. The ball was in the United States court now. The country needed to reclaim its authority and demonstrate that its technology was bigger and better than the communists. They needed a symbol, as big and fast as possible. That same year, Edward Teller, the inventor of the hydrogen bomb, wrote a project about outer space detonations. He proposed detonating at least one bomb on the moon, and another one near it, to test the lunar surface after the eruptions. He wasn't the first scientist to suggest it, and by the end of 1957, there were rumors that the Soviets were considering it, too. A sensationalist piece in the Pittsburgh Press reported, quote, The latest rumor going around is that the Russians plan to explode a rocket-borne H-bomb on the moon on or about November 7th. If that's true, look out. The rocket and its cargo of violence are more likely than not to boomerang. In 1958, the Air Force began assembling a team to see if this outlandish plan would be plausible. From the Air Force's perspective, the explosion would serve two purposes. One, the blast effects would be measured by scientists who would learn more about the moon than ever before. The other, perhaps even more important, a giant explosive cloud in space would be visible to the whole world. This would undoubtedly serve as a show of strength for America. Dr. Leonard Rifle was approached by the Air Force to lead the project. He had already held senior positions at NASA and was a close co-worker of Nobel Award winner Enrico Fermi, along with other world-renowned scientists. Rifle was intrigued and fascinated by the subject matter, even though the moon wasn't his area of expertise. In a 2000 interview with The Observer, he stated, quote, The Air Force wanted a mushroom cloud so large it would be visible from Earth. The U.S. was lagging behind in the space race. The explosion would obviously be best on the dark side of the moon, and the theory was that if the bomb exploded on the edge of the moon, the mushroom cloud would be illuminated by the sun. To know everything there was to learn about the moon, Rifle recruited Gerard Kuiper, a Dutch astronomer, planetary scientist, and selenographer. One of the last men to be hired was doctorate student Carl Sagan. His job was to accurately model the expansion of the dust cloud that would be caused by that kind of nuclear explosion on the moon's surface. The Air Force needed to know how big and visible the mushroom cloud would be. Almost a year and a half later, in the summer of 1959, Project A-119 was presented to the Air Force in a report named A Study of Lunar Research Flights. The now unclassified, almost 300-page investigation contemplated all the scientific, military, and political pros and cons of a hypothetical atomic explosion on the moon. According to the report, quote, The study was conducted of various theories of the moon's structure and origin, 
and a description of the probable nature of the lunar surface is given. The areas discussed in some detail are lunar optical studies, seismic observations, lunar surface and magnetic fields, plasma, magnetic field effects, and organic matter at the moon. Bombing the moon had a significant political benefit. The giant mushroom cloud image would imprint itself into the entire world's minds, and the Soviet Union would fall behind in the space race. Sputnik and its successor would seem like child's play. But the document isn't exactly clear on how the warhead would make its way to outer space. Considering some of the chapters were cut out or redacted, not much is known about the specifications a rocket would need to carry a bomb to the moon. However, the report does suggest a missile carrying a nuclear device would be launched from Earth and travel 238,000 miles to the moon, where it would detonate upon contact. Scientists discarded the possibility of a hydrogen bomb, as it would have been too heavy for a missile. The conclusion was that an atom bomb would be the better choice. The weapon would have been at least as large as the one used on Hiroshima at the end of World War II. The Air Force scrapped the plan entirely before it was even formally considered. And although there isn't an official reason why A-119 was scrapped, there is plenty of speculation. Even if the Air Force had done all the math correctly, there was no absolute way of knowing what could happen to Earth should the mission fail. There was also the possibility that bombing the moon would be seen as an act of military violence, rather than a show of scientific prowess. Fear at the likely public outrage might have been a powerful reason to stop the project. As Dr. Rifle said, quote, It was a PR device, without question, in the minds of the people from the Air Force. The scientists' concern about radioactive contamination from the moon could also have been one of the deciding factors in canceling the program and eliminating the possibility of any future missions with space warheads. In the years that followed, Congress passed two different bills that would further limit these kinds of attacks. The first one was the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1967. The second was the United Nations Outer Space Treaty in 1967, which over a hundred countries signed. America rose as the space race winner almost 10 years later with the iconic Apollo 11 mission. On July 20th, 1969, the world watched, astonished, as Neil Armstrong became the first man to ever set foot on the moon. Dr. Rifle became the deputy director at NASA for the Apollo program. Then young graduate Carl Sagan became an American global icon of science with a television show and several published books. A study of lunar research flights was designated as classified information and stayed hidden from the public for decades. It wasn't until the mid-90s when biographer Kay Davidson found out about the project while researching for a book about Sagan. The project came into public attention in the year 2000 when the book was published. This led Dr. Rifle to break his anonymity as the project's leader. He gave an interview to The Observer, where he revealed details about America's unusual lunar plan, but didn't specify how the explosion would have taken place. He said, quote, Had the project been made public, there would have been an outcry. There's no doubt that had Project A-119 been implemented, modern history would be vastly different. The moon is a source of scientific and artistic inspiration for people worldwide, and the thought of it not existing is mind-boggling. According to Vince Houghton at the International Spy Museum, the explosion wouldn't even have looked the way the Air Force expected. Due to the lack of atmosphere, instead of a mushroom cloud, the world would have only gotten a flash of bright light. British nuclear historian Dr. David Lowry said about the project, quote, It is obscene. To think that the first contact human beings would have had with another world would have been to explode a nuclear bomb. Had they gone ahead, we would never have had the romantic image of Neil Armstrong taking one giant step for mankind.